Okay. Good evening, everybody. And Gemara uh, Khatima Tova, please God, a, it should be a, a beautiful year for the uh, revealed brochures for all of us. And uh, just um, on behalf of Yeshiva Mizrahi, just to welcome everybody to the Rosh Hashiva of our Taylor's Shir. And just to say how, how proud we're all feeling. And I'd like to just mention in front of Rabbi Taylor how proud we are about the unbelievable um, services that we had over Rosh Hashanah. And I see Stacey's here, and just want to give her really our courage to talk for the enormous amount of work that she put in, just to, to make sure that things ran smoothly. It's not easy. The logistics of seven minyonim um, for two days, and then we mixed them together. But really, it was an amazing thing to have our campus pumping again, so many people walking around, so much davening, so much learning, so much singing. It was really beautiful. So really big shkrach to everybody. And uh, uh, Rabbi Taylor needs no real introduction. Um, but just to say thank you again, Rabbi, for, uh, for being part of our world. You add so much to it. You, you, you bring a depth of Torah Eretz Yisrael um, to us. And we, we thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to, um, to your share this evening. And uh, we wish everybody a Gemara Chatima Tova. Please God, only good things to everybody. Um, Looks like Rabbi Taylor may not be there. And I left, you left it. Okay, got it. Okay. I just can't seem to make myself bigger. Okay. Oh, one minute. We can see you perfectly, yourself... Rama. Yeah, okay then. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, Johnny, start again then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just introduced no, Johnny, you, you and thank you what? for your time, Rabbi. So, so we thank you just for being part okay, of our then. community in that way. Okay, then. Um, I'm sorry, everybody, for the mix-up. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry I, there was some problem with my computer, and I'm using the iPad now. So one of my problems will be that I won't be able to do share screen with you. But what I'll do is that anybody who wants... Oh, there we are. Anybody who wants to see the source sheets afterwards, I'll send them on to the office, and they can share them with everybody. Okay. So let's start off. Okay, every single year, every single year, I try to create a new journey into Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is one of the most multifaceted um, Chagim. Um, if we look, for instance, in the Rambam, we'll see that he divided up the idea of Yom Kippur into three different sections. He has Hilchot Shuva. He has Hilchot Shvitat Asor, and he has also Hilchot Avodat Yom Kippurim. That means there are three facets to it. There's the Tshuvat facet, there's the fasting facet, the Inui, and we also have the Avodat Yom Kippurim of the Kohen Gadol in the Beit HaMikdash, which if we look in the Torah, we'll see that is a central theme because that takes up the whole of Parshat, half of Parshat Achrimot, which we will read on Yom Kippur. But what I want to delve into this year, and I've tried to, every year I try to create new journeys into Yom Kippur. Uh, this year I want to take a, a new journey into Yom Kippur. Um, it's one of my journeys. I've got a few journeys. And uh, this one is a journey which will take us through a sort of historical way of looking at Yom Kippur and its aspects into our perception of Yom Kippur. So what we're going to start off with is something which seems to be not so serious. Um, and why isn't it so serious? Because it doesn't appear in the Gemara. It doesn't appear in a Mishnah. But it appeared for the first time in the writings of the Gornim. And there was a question in the period of the Gornim, and here we're talking about from the years 800, 700 yeah. to a year 1000 in Babylon. And one of the things which, for instance, yeah. the Ramban, mm -hmm. Nachmanadi speaks about them, is the fact, the very fact that there was a continued tradition from the destruction of the first temple 
going through to 1948, if we take it up until modern day history, of the community of Babylon. The Jews were never exiled from there. It wasn't like in Europe where we went through goodness knows how many exiles. The Jews of Babylon had a Messorah, had a tradition, which goes back to the destruction of the first temple. And the Ramban speaks about that. The Ramban says, listen, if, we, if there was a custom of the Gonim, that means it was a custom which Rav Ashi, the editor of the Talmud Bavli, had that custom. And what was the custom which we want to speak about? The custom is blowing the shofar at the end of Yom Kippur. Now, why do we blow the shofar at the end of the Yom Kippur? And this was a question which certain communities in Babylon asked the last of the Go'onim, Rav Haigon. And Rav Haigon said, the reason why we blow the shofar on Yom, the end of Yom Kippur is to remind us of the shofar of the Yovel. Every 50 years, there was a special service on Yom Kippur, which we'll speak about soon. And they used to blow the shofar on the Yom Kippur in the 50th year. And that, says Rav Haigon, is the reason why we blow it. Because we don't, in actual fact, know exactly when your veil is. So every year could be the Jubilee year. And Rav Haigon says, every year we blow that shofar in order to remind us of the blowing of the shofar of the Yovel. Okay, now the depth behind this custom and the idea behind it will be a central theme in what I'm going to speak to you about today. In Parshat Bahar, it is written that every Yom Kippur, the 50th year, they used to blow the shofar, which that was the time when all the Avadim, all the servants, would go out to freedom. And all the Sadot and all the, all the fields would go back to their original owners. And not only was there a special blowing the shofar, on the Ovel of that Yom Kippur said the Mishnah, in the third peric of Rosh Hashanah, they used to say also, Malchuyot, Zichronot, Veshofarot. What we do every Rosh Hashanah, says the Mishnah, they used to say, Malchuyot, Zichronot, Veshofarot. In the language of the Mishnah, Shaveh HaYovel Rosh Hashanah, Litkiya Uli Brachot. Exactly what we do. Now, what is all this about? Now, if I would have a share screen with me, I would show you two slichot, which we said today. The slichot, which we said today, are fascinating, because in actual fact, they are the first, in inverted commas, day of our Seret Yimei Tshuva. All the slichot, which we said before that, they were old customs. They weren't so old. They were brought around in the 13th, 12th century. The custom of saying slichot in Aseret Yimei Tshuva was also in the period of the Go'onim. And the Rambam also speaks about that minhag. We spoke about it before, about Aseret Yimei Tshuva. And there I want to read with you two slichot. The first slicha we say straight away. And this slicha was written by Rashi. The first slicha, anybody who opens up slichot, will see that before we say the Shlosh Esrei Midot, and before we say Kyal Recha Mecha Harabim, there is an introduction. And this introduction was written by Rashi. And the Hebrew is very complicated, but one of the things which the slicha, which this Rashi writes is the following. As Terem Nimtuchu Nivlei Shavim before the barrels of clouds were created. Ba'aretz, on the land, ad lo dubkura gavim, the pieces of soil were not joined together. Thank you, Rav Johnny. Even before the clouds were stretched above and the soil was joined together on earth, in your presence, seven things were already ready. And one of them was dat, the Torah, the kiss, 
the divine throne, and Ritiya, repentance. This is how Rashi introduces the first slicha which we said today. And yet we said another one also, which is, if you want, you can go to number, okay, Azmi, Azmi, Kedim, it's Azmi, Azmi, Kedim, it's the last, it's the 15th or 16th one. It's the Pizmon. No, 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 no. I don't know which one it is. Azmi, Kedim, no, 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 before that. Sorry, okay, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry about this, guys. If you'll find your Rav Johnny, all well and good. No, it's a long time before that. Okay, it's written. As me as mikedim ikdam ta from the earliest days you gave us tshuva, the terim him tachta aretz before you stretched the land and the pieces of soil. Those are the stichot which we started off today on Tzom Gedalia. Tshuva was created. The concept of tshuva was the idea of God before man was created. Now, what does this mean? The world of return, the world of going back to beginnings. Tshuva is going back home. The first time the word tshuva as a word is mentioned in the Tanakh is concerning Shmuel. Utshuvato haramata. Every single year he used to take a journey around Eretz Israel and he used to go back home. Tshuva is returning. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates, created in the world man's ability to return. And in this pismon, which I just quoted for you, Azmi Azkedi Mikdamti Tshuva, it speaks about the eight people who did Tshuva. The first people in the world who did Tshuva. Adam, Cain, Reuven, etc. And what was this for? Because, as the Chinuch says in Parshat Achrimot, he says that in the idea of the world, God created one day when man can be accountable for all his actions. Accountability. Shuvah, responsibility and accountability. And one day, every single year, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives man a day in the year. It doesn't make any difference which day in the year it will be. And we will show, in actual fact, that this day changed. Not really changed, but it worked in different ways, in different parameters. And the Chinuch writes the following, because it was the Chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's in Mitzvah Kuf Pei He, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had a certain amount of Chesed, kindness towards man. And he gave him a day where he can be accountable. He can weigh up all his actions and see exactly what he did. Because that is what Rosh Hashanah is. Rosh Hashanah is showing you an Excel of all your actions from last year, Yom Kippur, to Rosh Hashanah. It's an Excel program. And it has artificial intelligence. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees exactly what we're thinking of. Because if you look at what we spoke about on Rosh Hashanah, L'tzofe Nistarot, he has the ability to see hidden things inside you, which until this year, the last few years, we never understood what it meant. But all of a sudden with artificial intelligence, all of a sudden we have the ability to see what's going on in your brain. It's frightening. But that's what the Excel program on Rosh Hashanah comes up and shows us. Not only what you did, not only video cameras everywhere, but also AI. And on Yom Kippur, in inverted commas, a man has to be accountable for all the things which he did. This was the chesed, which the Chinuch said is Yom Kippur. 
that you don't have a huge balance in your life as an Avera of sins. But every year, you can do tshuva. You can go back home. And go back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and say, I've returned home, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm doing a restart, a reset. And that is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is a restart. It's a reset for every one of us. But how did this Yom Kippur be developed? Now, we all know that the first time, one of the first times Yom Kippur is mentioned is in the Pasha of Achrei Mot. After the death of Nadav Abihu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Aaron HaKohen how he's going to go into the Mishkan and what's going to happen on Yom Kippur. And at the end of this Pasha, it's written, on this day, Ki Bayom Azeh, Yichaper Alechem L'Tahir Etchem. HaKadosh Baruch is going to forgive you great. And we all know, and what's written at the end of this pasuk, achat b'shana. It's written in the sentence there, and that's the title of our subject today, achat b'shana. Ba'ita zot lachem l'chukat olam l'chapea al b'nei Yisrael mikol chatatam, achat b'shana. One day a year. And this one day a year happens to be Yom Kippur. And why does it happen to be Yom Kippur? Because Yom Kippur is the day when Moshe Rabbeinu brought down the second tablets of stone and Kodesh Baruch Hu forgave Am Yisrael. That's how Rashi interpreted the whole of the story of the Mishkan. The Mishkan is a way of doing tshuva, repentance for the golden calf. And all this happened on Yom Kippur. But the Ramban doesn't agree with that. The Ramban says that even before the sin of the golden calf, Yom Kippur would take place. And how do we know that? Because in the Torah, it's written twice before that, the terminology of Achat B'Shana, one day a year. And where's that written? That's written concerning the Mizbah HaKtoret, the small little altar, where every single day they offered up the incense, the Ketoret. Now, this sentence, the Achat B'Shana, and it's written there the following. V'chiper Aaron, in chapter 30, in Sefer Shemot, V'chiper Aaron, and Aaron will atone for, al karnot Achat B'Shana, once a year, midam chatat akipurim, from the blood of the offering of the kipurim. Thank you, Rav Johnny. Please take note in front of you that in this sentence, the chiper Aaron al karnot achat b'shana midam chatata pekipurim. Twice it's written in this sentence, achat b'shana, one day a year. Three times it is written in the Torah concerning Yom Kippur, achat b'shana, one after the golden calf and twice, according to the Ramban, before the golden calf. Now this concept of achat b'shana, before the golden calf, before the sin of the chet ha'egel, means to say to us that the idea of one day a year is something which is the essence of Yom Kippur. From the multiple and the multifaceted concepts of Yom Kippur, it all becomes one. One idea. Achat b'shana. Chazals come and tell us a fascinating idea. And they tell us that if we look at the numerical value of Satan, sin, Nun, Tet, 
או סין, תת, נון, סין is a 300, נון is 50, okay, and what's it called, הסתן, sorry, הסתן, נון is 50, תת is 9, 5, is four, 364. 364 days a year, we have a Yetzirah. We have the Satan. We have this drive to do Averot, or our ability to do Averot. One day, the 360, 365th day of the year, There's no Satan. That is Achat B'Shanna. One day a year. And here it all meets together. And it all meets together because the three dimensions of holiness meet in one place. We have Anybody who's read a book called Chaos, one of the most fascinating books which I've read, speaks about the randomness of the movement of smoke. Smoke, how it moves in the world, and it's random. Is there a plan for it? Depends on the winds, depends on anything. And if there are no winds, then how will it move? will be random. Yet the word in Hebrew is Ashan, Ayin, Shin, Nun. And the great Hasidic rabbis said that the word Ashan is an abbreviation. Olam, the world, space, Shana, Time and nefesh, the human being. Creation was made in the realm of time and space, and we live in the dimensions of time and space. Olam, space, shana, time, and nefesh, the human being. On Yom Kippur, they all meet. They all meet in one place, in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. They all meet at one time, Yom Kippur, Achat B'Shana. The holiest man of the Jewish people, the Kohen Gadol, stands in this holy place, at this holy time, and there is a meeting of Olam Shana B'Nefesh. And that is why the Satan can't affect us. That is what happens on Yom Kippur. It's got nothing to do with the golden calf. It's got to do with the plan of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this plan of HaKadosh Baruch Hu enables man to be accountable. And he's accountable on this special day, Achat B'Shana, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu leaves space for a man to return. He leaves his space. He leaves him the area where he can return, the direction. He puts up all different signposts on the road, on the journey of man. He gives him 40 days before Rosh Hashanah, 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. He gives him Rosh Hashanah. He gives him Aseris Yumei Tshuva. And all these are signposts for man to return on this special day, Achat B'Shana. And this was the idea of HaKadosh Baruch Hu even before man was created. The man needs space to come home. Man needs space to return. And that's what Shuvah is. And that was the idea of Shuva. And in order that this, this thing can take place, We have to ask Mechila from people because we come in as one human being. And if somebody's got a faribble with us, 
or he's got a broigus with us, then we won't be one people. And that's why Chazal say that Ein Yom HaKippurim Mechaper, Yom Kippur doesn't atone until you go to your friend and ask him for Mechila. And Averot, we have 10 days of asking Mechila from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Yom Kippur is a day like that. And therefore we all come into this united effort of time, space, and man. Now, let's go forward or backward in history. What was Yovel? What took place on Yovel? On the Jubilee. What took place on Yovel was man coming home. He was a slave 49 years. And all of a sudden he comes home. All of a sudden the owner of fields who had to sell his fields because he was so poor, he gets them back in the year of Yovel. Everything returns home. And this returning of home is quite amazing. And why is it amazing? Because this took place also on Yom Kippur. This took place on Yom Kippur. The sleigh went only after the blowing of the shofar on Yom Kippur did this take place. And why is that? Because to go home, you need to prepare the journey. And our rabbis tell us, what did these slaves do from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur? Because we all know that Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of Yovel. And they used to go home only on Yom Kippur. And what was this 10 days? And the Gemara comes and tells us that the first Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the first 10 days, of doing tshuva, the Torah comes and tells us that. It's quite amazing. Mirosh Chodesh Ad Yom Kippurim. Lo Hayu Avadim. The slaves did not go home to their houses and they didn't work. And the fields never went back to their owners. But the slaves were sitting in a restaurant. Ela Avadim Ochlim. They had crowns on their head. The first Aseris Yimei Tshuva was preparation for going home. And this preparation is Tshuva, is going home. They couldn't go home straight away. The shock would be too great. The movement would be too great. And they have to get into the environment of being a free man. This is what you call planning. Kodesh Baruch Hu plans from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur in the days of the Ovel, 10 days preparing man to go home. And every single year, we blow the shofar at the end of Yom Kippur because we are all have taken this journey of going home, Shuvah. And Yom Kippur is the day where the actual journey takes place. Aseret Yimei Shuvah, just like in the time of the Beis Amikdosh, when we had your will, the servants prepared for going home. So every single year, we have Aseret Yimei Shuvah. And Aseret Yimei Shuvah, is 10 days of planning this journey. Complicated. All of a sudden, a guy who was a slave will meet up with his family. All of a sudden, a guy who never had fields has got to realize what it means to be an owner of a field again, now to look after his money because he won't, doesn't want to sell them again. And this planning is an integral part of our lives. And that is why we have a serious Yimei Tshuva. And let's go back to the first Slicha, which we said today. The first Slicha, which we say 
after Rosh Hashanah is Tshuva preceded the world. God sends us out, every single one of us, on a journey. Sometimes it's a simple journey. Sometimes it's a complicated journey. And every year on Yom Kippur, we have the ability to take the turn back home. Tshuva. And Tshuva, on this day, where the Satan, nobody will disturb you. Nobody. There's no Satan. There's no food. There's no drink. There's nothing. All there is, is davening. Every single one of us becomes like a Malach on Yom Kippur. Every single one of us. Because we are taken away from the world of physical things. And that's why we don't say on Yom Kippur v'urachum. We go straight into it. Straight into Yom Kippur. We've said vidui before that. And we go into Yom Kippur trying to correct after 10 days of preparation to get back home. And this getting back home ends off with the shofar of the Yovel. When the Go'onim made this takana, this minhag, they understood, they wanted to give us a deeper insight of what this achat b'shana, it's the only terminology which the Torah uses concerning one day. And that's why I called it achat b'shana, one day in a year. And this one day in a year is so unique, is so special, that it needs preparation. We need to plan it. And this planning is an integral part. And every single day, we say slichas. We have to learn what the slichot are. And I'll give you one more dimension. If we look at the slichas, every single day, there's a slicha which talks about the akedah. And each one of the slichot which speak about the akedah give a different angle of the akedah. Each slicha, the person who wrote it, wants to give his personal feelings, what the akedah did to us, and what it's supposed to do to us, and what Masir Nefesh is, what giving up is. And sometimes in order to go home, we have to give up on things. There's no way. You give up on things. And sometimes there might be big things. And that's why we read the Akedah every single day of Aseret Shemitshuva. And that is the Achat B'Shana. One day where every single one of us makes this unique, unique journey home. I wish you all Ma'achat Yimatova, Shana Tova, and I will send now Stacy, the source sheets, they're in Hebrew. If anybody wants to read them, they can. You will have them, you can read through them. And please try to learn them. Because the, even though it might be in Hebrew, but try to learn Chevutot, husbands and wives together, and go through it and see how you feel about this unique journey of going home on Yom Kippur. Shabbat Shalom and Gmar Chatima Tova and have a meaning, meaningful Yom Kippur. Thank you, Rabbi, once again for your deep insights, for giving us a whole new perspective, a whole new single perspective on coming home, on what Yom Kippur is. Achat Bashana. Please, God, it should be a, a singular year for all of us, a year that moves out of um, the difficulties that we've had into one where we find our home, we find ourselves in the, in the space that we want to be able to be together in the one we like, we like to be as a community. And we look very forward Rama, to having you with us as part of that wonderful journey in the new year. God bless to you. And, to Mitzvah, and I'm sorry for the, ba- I'm sorry for the balagan at the beginning. No, no worry. No worry. Rama. You redeemed yourself in a big way. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, you very much. Robert Taylor. God bless. Thank you. Rama Taylor. God bless everybody. Have a good night, everybody.